Okay, folks, well, we're just going to turn our attention to this front bulkhead here for a little bit. Uh, still got a couple of things to do to get finished up. Um, this is a void right here. Still need to get some foam poured in there. Uh, first, though, I'm going to cut this down a little bit, I mean, right to this line right here, and back this way. And I'll probably remove a little of this material right here. I just want to get this kind of evened out uh, with uh, the height of the sump right here. And uh, this portion right here is just going to be the, the two layers of shaft alley cover. So there'll be one there and then the next one will be up higher like that. So that'll tie this in nicely right there and, and kind of make that look cohesive. Uh, you can see over here, I've already trimmed it down on the side. Otherwise this would be up high right here and I'd have to just put a bunch of fill in here to level that out. So uh, now we just got one little tiny spot to, to put some putty right there and uh, we'll have a nice flat surface and then I can tie it in nicely to this radius right here. So a little bit, this will get trimmed down right here. I'll just leave that little bit of foam and then I can just kind of blend that out. And that'll look real good. Definitely probably be using some spray foam back in here to just fill this hard to access cavity. about there so first thing is do the same thing we'll poke a couple holes in here get this filled full of foam and then we'll come back and trim everything up and that's looking good this will be the very top layer of the shaft alley essentially the height of it so, so I just wanted to level this off and then we'll just have this transition there same thing over here. Do the final layer. I'm just gonna give this a little trim and I'll bevel that out. This will match it in over here. We're getting there. This is gonna go. Way far there. They can go fast. Yeah. I don't really have anywhere to put the extra either. Blinded. Oh shoot. 
What, what? In plastic. Ah, uh, okay, I will just turn it. Oh my gosh! Wow! Oh jeez. <laughs> Play one of those snakes at uh, uh, uh. 4th of July. He was not prepared, was he? <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Oh no! <laughs> I guess I should probably give you something. That's not too pretty funny. I mean, if, if somebody doesn't film it, then people don't get to enjoy it. Oh my gosh, I can feel this exothermic heat. Yeah. Well, I think I still got a tiny little void back in here. I'm just going to take a, like a half inch drill bit and poke a couple of holes in there and shoot some spray foam in there. Um, I don't know what we're going to do with this cavity here. Well, I'll get this trimmed up, I guess, now that we're, yeah, just shoot a little bit in there and then uh, I think we're good. And we can get this piece of laminate glued on there. Yeah. And then um, probably just poke a couple holes in it and put some pour foam in there. All right. Okay, I just got some spray foam to finish up the job here. Or controlled, probably. Not really sure what we got for voids down in here, so it's okay if it gets a little out of control and wild. Well, I know that there's going to be some voids in here, but there's really nothing we can do about it. Yep. Other than just live with it. I think we did a pretty good job. Get down into that position, you can actually see you guys. Standing up above you. <laughs> All right, folks, well, just started doing some work on these hatches again. Uh, starting to get them roughed in a little bit more, kind of figure out exactly what we're doing here. Uh, let's see, so this is gonna be the final and top layer here. So I went ahead and got it all roughed out. Um, took a few, few times to get my spacing right. It started out a little bit big. I wasn't too happy with it and uh, ended up uh, bringing the size down a little bit. I had uh, one of the original plugs that I used to cut out of the layer underneath, but it's actually smaller now because I have to give it room for the fiberglass as the edges are coated. It uh, reduces the size by about half an inch altogether. It's just shy of a quarter inch on each layer. So this inside hatch has to be a little bit smaller. So let's see, so this hatch here is cut to size and I'll come in here and I'll cut this back a little bit to make up the difference between the two. And uh, if I remove this, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So this is the second layer right here and this is trimmed now. So by the time this surface right here gets glassed and also this surface gets glassed, it'll almost completely close that gap. There should be roughly an eighth of an inch, maybe a, a hair or less in between there. And that's gonna be just about right. Um, this is gonna get cut back right here and opened up and that'll increase uh, the distance on this flange and this will also get covered with glass, which is gonna make it come out further. So these two layers right here will be bonded together and the end result will be something like this. We'll radius this edge, uh, fill it inside there and then this whole thing will get covered. 
And this is essentially the size of the finished opening right here. Um, so these two holes right here were the same, these two layers, but that's the difference in the glass right there. And so once this is covered, it'll match this inside one. And that's just uh, an extra layer that we put in there because of the amount of force that'll be in this area. We wanted to make sure that we didn't have any issues with it sagging. Uh, if it sags or twists or anything under a load, you'd lose your seal on this and uh, you'd end up with uh, draining your hold, uh, the water in your fish hold into the shaft alley, which we don't want. So we're building this very strong so we don't have any issues like that. So yeah, so these two will, here will be laminated. The third layer will be laminated on top. Two layers for the hatch. That's going to be super strong when it's done. And this is kind of what it's looking like. So pretty happy so far. Uh, to start getting this done, I guess. Yeah, that's working good. I'll leave a nice accurate line right there. So I'm just using this drill bit, the small drill bit, just to ride in that groove right there and uh, guide my marker. All right, there we go. Beautiful cut. So the nice thing is I'll just use this as a template for my next one. So all the, all the hard work is done now. Uh, cutting it is easy, getting it laid out and everything always seems to be a little bit time consuming. Um, this is kind of one of those things that you want to make sure that you're happy with it from the get-go if possible. Not have to redo it. Not have to laminate a new panel. And so it was a little bit time consuming to get that figured out exactly where I wanted it. But I think that looks good. And now you can see there's substantially more flange here for a ceiling surface now. And that'll be totally uh, sufficient. When we go to actually make the gasket for this, we'll just use regular old silicone. And um, the surfaces will be all finished and everything. And what we'll do is that we'll just use some, some Vaseline or some light grease on, on one surface, probably this surface down here, and cover it. With, uh, with grease or Vaseline. And then the hatch itself will run a really big heavy bead of silicone on it and we'll just drop it into place. And we'll just suck it down a little bit just to where the hatch is a little bit proud of where we want it up here. So we want it to be flush so when you're shoveling in here you're not hitting that lip with your shovel all the time. So we'll just make it a tiny bit proud and then we'll leave it alone. And uh, in a few weeks, it'll be ready to go. It'll be, uh, it'll be hardened up and you can take it off and it'll just part right where that uh, grease is. And what you'll be left with is a perfect mold, a, a perfect uh, copy of the surface below and it'll seal 100%. All right, everyone, welcome back. 
<laughs> Dad's a big old dust ball over there. He's been down in the fish hole doing some grinding. Ah. Miserable job. Miserable Dirty, yet necessary. Hot, dusty. <laughs> yep, just getting all the borders where the uh, the fiberglass liner and the fish hold where the new stuff will tie in. So just getting those borders all ground down and prepped. Mm -hmm. Got all your pieces trimmed that were uh, laminated by us the last few days. Yeah, I did a little clean up earlier. It was pretty bad after mm -hmm. yesterday's session, and I'm about to funk it out again. Yeah, so I just did a quick clean up earlier and uh, just getting ready to make a big mess down there again. So yeah, um, it's coming along good. Yep, all the little prep that you need to do to tie in your glass good to the old substrate. Yeah, so I kind of got this, uh, this half of the back hold yesterday um, up along the ceiling where the bulkhead meets the ceiling. That's kind of a tough spot. Um, the perimeter of the hatch right here, where we'll be wrapping glass down. Um, never comfortable overhead grinding. And over here in the lamination station, got uh, several jobs going on currently. Over on this side, these are our strips that, are, that we're using for uh, braces on the bulkhead. Also our uh, bin board holders. Um, they started out over here. We cut these up the other day and uh, sanded the corners smooth. Just the one inside corner left to go on those ones. Doing that after we laminate the two together. Yep, That's... this is a two pieces joined right here. Yep, right here. Um, gave this one corner a nice radius. So um, if this were the bulkhead, this will be laminated to the bulkhead. There'll be two of them right here, which forms a channel that a bin board can go in there and for those of you who don't know bin boards are basically um, boards that separate uh, fish hold into compartments it does two things it allows you to uh, to ice fish into them and contain like ice down the center um, that you can draw out of it also prevents your load from shifting which is the most important part um, whether you're just icing fish or an RSW you need to have some kind of bin boards at least part way up to prevent that from happening. And so uh, these are going to be a very important part of the, the whole uh, setup down there. They'll provide a lot of rigidity for the bulkhead and keep it from bowing under a load and also keep our product from shifting around down there and causing problems. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what it looks like right there. Uh, Profile. Yeah, just, uh, just sanded these by hand. Well, I knocked a, I, I just kind of gave it a chamfer, probably about a quarter inch with the grinder, and then just hand sanded the rest of the radius. It turns out nice. Um, probably need a little bit of putty in these holes. No yep. big deal. Just a light fill more than anything. Keeps a bunch of pockets from happening when you go to glass it. Over here we've got, uh a little bit of gluing going on, going on. got uh, seven layers of laminate uh, cut right here and those will turn into one of these plates and this plate is the top plate for our bearing block. That's what our split bearing will sit on and support the shaft. Much like that, I would put it over there but I'll probably uh, contaminate Matt's work if I do because it's covered with dust. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, next morning, our little lamet chunk is all hard. This will be serving the same purpose as this one right here. So this is where our bearings will mount to. Um, these are split bearings to have the actual bearing housing is put away so it doesn't get full of dust and damaged, but this is just a housing for it. Um, we're gonna have two of these, one in the front hold and one in the aft hold. So this will be the plate for the other one to rest on. So yeah. come out nice and flat when you lay them up on a panel. There we go. Ready to go. I'll take this down. I'll get it trimmed up. We'll still have to establish the base of this aft one. How we're going to do it. It's not very tall it's I think it's gonna only be about maybe three inches off the uh, bottom of the shaft alley there so not nearly as tall as this one so I have to go down there I wrote some notes down somewhere um, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> where they're at so we might have to stretch our line out again and reestablish that so down here in the fish hole today <clears throat> Uh, I guess goals today are to do some gluing in of pieces. Yeah, parts and pieces. Yep, so you can see over here, well you can probably see it's kind of camouflaged with a layer of dust on it, but got a couple pieces of uh, pre-laminate fiberglass that we're going to use to fill in this dip in the, uh, the old fiberglass there. You can kind of see it. It's a bit hard to tell depth, but yeah, yeah it's actually about uh, close to one inch right here in this area three quarters of an inch So our goal was when we put in these corners and these sumps is anything that we do in the future is In terms of tearing this stuff out and re-insulating and re-glassing this fish hold We wanted uh, a good starting point. We wanted these two sides to be even with each other and so that's why we didn't drop this corner down to the depth of this. Right now this is matched to the top of the, uh, the height of the sump covers and the sump on the other side. And we could just kind of like fill this in, <clears throat> put some glass over it and call it good, but it's just a little bit too weird. Yeah, it'd leave like a standing pool of water there. And well, that wouldn't hurt anything, it would just, just be annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of annoying. So it's actually a pretty easy fix just to come in here. Um, this needs to be tabbed in basically to the old stuff anyways. So we'll just lay up a couple of pieces of laminate. Um, this is actually a leftover piece from back there. And then Matt Nate made another little square one. It'll go here. This will give us a nice flat base again. Um, we'll just fill that in with some foam, probably just some spray foam, excuse me, from a can. And uh, the end result will be similar to this, where we have this tapped in now. Yep, we did that, uh, I guess, day before yesterday, or mm -hmm. a couple days ago, whatever. Yeah. So we did that, we did the forward part. And you can tell there's still some low spots, even over here. There's a big low spot right here, but that's not as critical. We just didn't want a, a big gap right there that it'd yeah. be kind of annoying to try and level that out and fill it. And then uh, over here, we kind of have the, the reverse of that. Um, this is actually like really high and was about a, oh, a solid half inch proud over here. And so I just kind of did the same thing. I just came in here and carved this out a little bit. Um, we're just gonna mix up some shavings from cutting these panels. We've got like a bucket full of it. Just gonna mix it with some resin slathered in here and level this it'll be it'll be better it'll be blended better so same thing um, we're not super worried about 
tying this in and making it look really good because this stuff will all be going away at some point. It's just to make it so it uh, it's fairly flat and will be easy to good. clean. Yeah. All right. Got our budget putty going <laughs> on here. Kind of an experiment. See if we can reuse this stuff. It's a little bit crumbly by the looks of it. I'm sure it'd come together with like some. Uh, it's actually plenty wet. Some of that um, fume silica or cabasol or something like that, but. This is going right there. I'm going to throw a piece of mat over it, so no big deal. Looks pretty nice. Yeah. See how it does. I kind of dug underneath the foam a little bit. Dug that out underneath that laminate on both sides in the hopes it kind of key it in there and hold. Um, I'll just level this off. Just blend it right down to the set chair. Throw a layer of mat over it. Just a cheap filler more than anything. Yep. For what it's worth. Yeah, I think it might work. I know it looks like a big mess right now, but we'll get it whipped into shape here. What do you think, Matt? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it'll work. I think so, huh? Alright, bunch of putties down. I don't know, I think it turned out pretty good. Looks pretty good to me. Got a pretty good gap in there. Um, didn't really want to waste good material, so we'll just sacrifice a little bit of resin. Um, that was like 18 ounces total, so like that much. It's not very... Not very expensive, really. Yeah, that would have been that. a ton of putty. That would have been a lot of putty, yeah. Like, we could use spray foam, I guess, but it would have been tough because just a little tiny fill. <laughs> yeah, there so, wasn't really that much. Maybe a half, three-quarter inch gap. Yeah. I'm just going to throw down a layer of mat now just to kind of absorb the excess uh, putty there, and it'll be a little easier to flatten out, too. Um, yeah, it's pretty good though. I'm not going to really worry about it too much. I'm going to come back and knock these edges down afterwards with the grinder. Any, any weird high spots, so... But actually, all in all, that does look pretty good. You still have your roller down here? Consolidator, right? Yep. That's what I meant. You yeah. know what I meant. I knew. He always knows what his dad means. Even when he rambles incoherently. I know what you need before you know what you need. It's often true. <laughs> You know, it reminds me of kitty hair. Yeah. Not the color of it. Kitty hair is just top strand. Uh, this stuff all chopped up finely, mixed in with resin, comes in a can. Kind of expensive. And that's about the color it comes out too. It's funny. I guess it just has a hardener that comes with it or? Uh, yeah. Was, yeah. that, was it equal part or? I no. Just forget. No, it's kind of almost like Bondo. You just put a squirt of hardener across the top and mix gotcha. it in. I think that's how it came. For sure. Yeah, I should just be able to bridge it between the two and level it up. It's not bad, really.
Yep. Now we'll do it. All right, we've got both these braces tabbed out. Well, not tabbed out, just the fill it and uh, light layer mat to flatten out the putty. Keep it nice and smooth for when we do tab it. Dad's over here, get ready to glue these things in. I, I lost my budget putty. My structural budget putty. Oh, Looking that didn't fall on my head. Alright, I'm just gonna throw a couple of gobs down here and just uh, flatten us out. Okay. And we'll come back in and spray some foam and these cracks and stuff. Just a little juice to help glue it on there. Basically just uh Putting that stuff down to give it a solid base and glue it to the thing so when you put foam in it, it doesn't push it up. Yeah. Get it leveled out, huh? Yep. Almost looks like a pro did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll keep fiddling around here and uh, bring you guys back. So just back here doing a few laminations. As you can see here, we've got our aft bearing block, uh, putting down three layers of 45, 1708. Um, 
cloth on it. And after that, it'll be a layer of mat. Um, so we laid this up uh, yesterday, got all the layers glued together. Um, two webs of basically what we've been using for all of our panels. It's uh, close to a quarter inch on each side of uh, lamination. So nearly a half inch times two for the center web. This will be supporting the bearing block like that, like you've seen on the other one. So nice and robust. Yeah, should do it. Should carry the load. It's really not that heavy, but uh, there's some weight there, I guess. Yeah, it's something we don't ever want moving around, so. I think to, that's the important thing, yeah. Good to have it as uh, solid as you can. So I suppose that shaft is somewhere, what, in the neighborhood at 250 pounds, so it'd be half of that, I guess? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'm laying this up over here. Dad got it all fitted out this morning, so um, get this laminated and tomorrow morning we'll be able to glue it in and get the bearing aligned. And uh, yeah, it'll be pretty exciting times pretty soon. Mm -hmm.